Let's go on. What's the? People. You're not going to be hit. People uh, hit you, you just have to put up with the hecklers. They're <laughs> yeah, not sorry. always polite. Yeah, I know. No, there's another guy that was going to be Yeah, so, so I'm a so, Christian yeah. and, and I'm here to, to talk about the Christian faith. Yeah. And I'm here to, to talk about um, basically what it means to be a Christian. But you find in, in Speaker's Corner, there's lots of people that criticize the Christian faith, particularly uh, Muslim speakers. Yeah. So that means it's fair game for Christians to criticize Islam. So that's the kind of conversations that I've been having today. But yeah, here I'm yeah, yeah. to talk about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay, so wait, if Jesus was here today, what would he say? Well, he would say the things that we find in the Gospels. Yeah, go on. So, yeah, so what something. kind of things does Jesus say in the Gospels? I don't know. He says, he, says that he, he says that you should know yourself yeah. and that you should be motivated by those virtues that lead you to be a greater man. So that means being motivated by love motivated by hope, motivated by faith, motivated by prudence, motivated by justice, motivated by chastity, motivated, um, you know, a, a number of other things. Because a lot of human beings, they can be motivated by envy or lust or greed or anger or, you know, they can be slothful about their lives. So Christ is calling us to be a better kind of human. So then I've got a few questions yeah. uh, for Christians. So, oh my God. Shut up. Shut up. You just have to ignore it. Yeah. Show him. J oh, JC. Wait, what do Christians say? What's Christian take on um, sex before marriage? Uh, sex before marriage yeah. is, is essentially to uh, not practice two, two virtues. Yeah. Faithfulness and chastity. Okay. Now, when you give over yourself to lust and desire, yeah. you essentially lower yourself to a yeah. baser kind of instinct. You essentially become like an animal. Yeah. A human being that can't control his own sexual desire is a bit like a monkey or a bit like a dog. You know, it, it's kind of like, it's subhuman yeah. not to be able to control your desire. To be, a, to, to be a better man, you have to control your own desires. And so Christ calls us to be a better kind of human, to be godlike in the way we conduct ourselves, which means that we have mastery over our flesh, not that our flesh has mastery over us. Okay, that was, that was really, okay. the other thing is, what's your thoughts on gay marriage? Do you support it? Uh, no, I don't. The, 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 very definition of, the very definition of gay marriage is a contradiction. It ontologically can't exist. Okay. Marriage requires a consummation, a consummation between a male and a female that is impossible for two men to have or two females to have. Marriage is a sacrament given to us by God. It predates the nation state. It predates every kind of civilization. It was the first human institution before anything else. And it's defined by God as between being a man and being, being between a woman. And, and the yeah. state has no power to redefine it. So what would you say about the woman who married like, her car? Or the woman who married the Eiffel Tower? It, 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 you can't marry a car. The definition yeah. of marriage yeah. is not something that the state or any human being can define. Yeah. It's defined by God. God is the one that defines marriage. So and he's defined it as between being a man and a woman. So does that mean gay people are going hell? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. The, the, the legalization and redefinition of marriage by the state does not mean that gay people are going to hell. That's a non sequitur statement, okay. and it's a non sequitur leap of logic. Uh, like, the, the, if if a gay person accepts Jesus Christ as their savior, and they're serious about trying to be his disciple, they have every. They have you know. I mean, the final judgment is up to God. This is why there's retinence in yeah. me to talk in, in terms of judgment. Yeah, so are you, you, know? are you God's warrior, basically, is what you're saying? I'm, no, well, well, what's that got to do with my previous answer? No, like, no, sir, I'm, I'm, <laughs> like, I don't, You're I'm, just throwing out some random no, no, comment that's got no, nothing to do. I've asked the same questions to you guys and uh, okay. Muslim guys. And so, um, their, obviously, answers are a lot more... What? I, I, I'll keep, uh, so, so, yeah. so, so, what's the question again? The question is: Let's finish off the last one. You said, I said, I, you said, obviously, gay marriage is illegal. So, would you say that gays are going to hell? No, I didn't say that. Yeah. I, what I said was, is that the state has no ability to define marriage. Yeah. Okay. The church has defined marriage as between a male and a female, and that is it. There is no further discussion on this topic for us as Christians. What would you say to like a gay Christian who said they can't get married? I know gay Christians. Okay. I, I would say to them that as a Christian, yeah. we relate to sex and sexuality through our discipleship with Jesus. We don't relate to Jesus through our sexual identity. You see, the world has inverted the Christian way of thinking. 
The Christian way of thinking is that you relate to sex and sexuality through your discipleship to Jesus Christ. The liberal progressives yeah. want to redefine the Christian faith and tell Christians that we should relate to our discipleship to Jesus Christ through our sexuality, and that is the wrong way to think about sex. The right way to think about sex is, is, through, is through what our, our Lord's teachings is. And the truth is, you're not a, a worse human being or less of a human being because you do or you don't have sex. You know, it, it, it's a really, can I, can I, I want to finish, because there's a real, there's a real sickness in our culture. There's a real sickness in our culture that we actually think that you're somehow failing as a human being if you don't have lots of sex. Yeah. That's a sickness in our culture. That is... Lots of, but sex is... Go on, what? So pleasurable? Right. Yeah, pleasurable and amazing? Well, what, okay. yeah. All yeah, of these yeah, things exactly. are true. Yes, they're true. So All of these are true sex. things. But, but, but the reality is... But, but yeah. what a sad culture it is yeah. that, that as human beings we've reduced ourselves to pursuing worldly pleasures rather than higher virtues. That we are defining life itself. We are defining life itself yeah. simply by the pursuit of pleasure. Okay. And the, the reality is that that's a, actually a, a really, a really uh, subhuman way to think about life. Yeah. It's a, because what it does is it takes away your dignity. Yeah. It reduces you to a baser animal. You're, I, I don't think so, personally. But you know, yes, yes, because I think you can you can live your life seeking pleasure and have high spiritual needs. It just doesn't have to be Jesus Christ. So, are you a hedonist? Yes, I would say. Right. I am. So, yeah, so I let that for as well. right. So let, let me ask you this question: yeah. What happens when your pleasure harms other people? My pleasure doesn't harm other people. Obviously. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm one thousand percent sure. Like me having sex with loads of people harms no one, other than maybe myself, maybe my mental health, but no one else. Here, here, here's how it harms people. Yeah. How does it harm people? Don't right. Tell me. Here's how it harms people. Because if people, if people practice yeah. sex for pleasure, they, they create a pathway in their mind that links these two things together, yeah. right? And, and that creates a kind of a discipleship, a formation of their inner man, a formation of their soul. Which means that when questions of fidelity come up, when questions of honor come up, when questions of um, internal dignity come up, the, the mind has already been programmed to pursue pleasure. And that means that it will compromise on these higher virtues of faithfulness, of truthfulness, of honesty, of acting with sincerity for the pursuit of pleasure. It also, it also cheapens the act of sex. It also cheapens the act of sex. Because sex, sex is best. Shall we move this way a bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's move this way again. I don't even believe in religion, to be honest. Right. Right, no, I, I, I would say that you do believe in. No, I don't. You believe in a philosophy. I, believe, I know what I believe in, and it's not religion. Yeah, that, that, what's your? Let's be clear about our definitions yeah. of terms. Yeah. You have a worldview. I have a worldview. Yeah. I have a theistic worldview. Yeah. You have maybe an atheistic or an agnostic worldview. Yeah. But the reality is, you haven't escaped the idea of having a worldview. Yeah. Right? You've got one. Yeah. The question is whether that the one that you have is grounded on something solid, yeah. you know, or whether it's just your own personal opinion. And I would say to you that it's just your personal opinion. And the problem with that is that that's really shaky ground to build your life on. I, I, I don't know. I'd love to actually stay and argue with you and discuss this. I don't have the time. How about yeah. you come back next I week and we talk I, again? I think I might. Right, you, you're really, what's your name? Jabel. Jabel, you're a really pleasant guy. Can I give you a gift? Yeah. If it's, if, it's a, if it's a Bible, I don't want it. It's not going to be a Bible. It's going to be a gift. Yeah, thank you. I honestly, I don't believe in religion at all. It's going to take a lot of time to convince me to get back onto it. I, 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 I have, believe in Jesus Christ. I have, yeah, a, I have uh, a gift for you, Jamel. Yeah. Is it a Bible? Because I'd really No, it's not it. a Bible. Right. I'm sure you can read that. It's yeah. very thin. Oh, I'll read have, have a read of that and then come back maybe I'll, back next and I'll speak to you again are you here yeah. every Sunday? I try to be I try to be yeah. I can't guarantee to be here every Sunday but I try to be here most Sundays alright All right. nice anyway, to meet lovely, you Jabel lovely chatting until next know. time lovely god bless what's your name? right <laughs> okay absolutely freezing really should have brought the scarf um, where's JC? where's JC?